Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of 2022's YDA Week interviews. In a slight change from the six things about format, today we'll be discussing environmental accountability in advertising. We'll be hearing from five members of the industry who either work in or have a particular interest and specialist insight into this topic. And we'll be discussing areas including the impact of the pandemic on the industry's commitment to the environment, governmental legislation, and whether there's enough being done by the industry to combat negative environmental impact. Joining me on the panel is Gabby Kay, co-founder of Green the Bid, Anka Peterson, ex-commercial producer and now documentary producer and a green consultant, Anna Hashmi, founder and EP at The Corner Shop, and directors Peter Thwaites and Cinder Arga. So hello everybody and welcome to the YDA panel about environmental accountability and advertising. Uh, I'm joined today by uh, Peter Thwaites, director, Cinder Arga, director, Gabby Kay, the co-founder of Green the Bid, Anna Hashmi, the founder and EP at The Corner Shop, and Anka Peterson, uh, ex-commercial film producer, a documentary film producer, and a green consultant. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us today to have this discussion. So first question uh, I want to start, there's been a lot of talk about green initiatives and, and green awareness uh, in and around the production process uh, and, what, and what is done on location and on set. But does the industry need to be more mindful uh, before that point about what scripts agencies write and how those scripts are approached? Um, Gabby, do you want to do you want to start us off? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, with Green the Bid, we don't so much get involved in in the creativity of the conversation, but I think that's definitely the point at which you start baking in the carbon in a production. Um, the decision making process from strategy onwards, even with the creative teams about where you're shooting, <clears throat> what you're shooting, I think that's where those conversations about carbon come in. I think it's worth pointing out right at the beginning of the conversation that within our industry in particular, most of the carbon is in the travel that we do and then in the data that we store for longevity after that point, although there is there are all sorts of greenhouse gas emissions associated with the process of production itself. Generally speaking, it's whenever you start burning gas that things become an issue. So I think that there is a, a huge accountability to be had at that point of inception to decide where are we shooting, how are we shooting, who's going to the shoot, so that people can be really accountable for that. And I think that that has, I think, I think the expectation of what that looked like has, has shifted because of COVID and because people were doing remote shooting. But it'd be interesting to see how that plays out as we go into into the future and COVID not being such a big impact on whether people fly or not. But certainly, yes, that is, inception point is extremely important. And then there's the whole creative side of what you're showing on screen, but that's the remit of the other people on this call. <laughs> yeah, I think as, as a director, I'd say that, you know, having further parameters with, within which we have to operate feels kind of natural and um, nothing too surprising to me. The idea that we have, we, directing is operating under a series of parameters that we have to accept and then create within that. And that's what creativity is, is working within the medium or the situation you have and make, you know, bring it to life. And to have for more, uh, some more levels of control or, or, or you know, uh, parameters that would come into that seem, uh, just a totally natural process so I don't see that as being a um, anything to worry about from a directing point if you all you know I'd have more concern if there were more green controls because it just isn't true I don't, I don't see that that would be an issue at all mm. I mean I, I'll jump in because I, I think you know I think that we should consider obviously our impact um, as we go into uh, producing jobs, but I would hate it to actually influence how scripts are written. Um, because our job as production has always been about figuring out how to do things. So, you know, um, we get scripts and they're to shoot in places all around the world with elephants and giraffes and waterfalls. And like, we don't actually always go to all these places. We figure out how to create that. Um, in one place or, you know, with minimum impact um, to travel and, you know, financial impacts. So I think we can adapt and think about um, how it will be, you know, 
more responsible as well. Um, I think we can, we're very adaptable and versatile in production. And I think we can still make things big without having to have as much impact on the environment as we used to in the past. So you think it's, it's production that the, the kind of brunt of the, of the kind of environmental sort of... I don't stuff. think it's the brunt. I mean, I think it is, you know, it's a collaboration. So there's only certain magic we can do, you know, and I think, you know, then there's a point where it has to be a conversation about you know, what's more important, what do we do? I think every script goes through a kind of process of what's financially viable, what's, you know, what you can afford to do in the time with the schedule. And I think the considerations about how we look at what our environmental impact is should be something we discuss with the agency and client and in that process. Mm -hmm. So producers and production companies have always had to kind of take into account pr practical and financial considerations about a shoot but do you think that kind of ecological and and climate um considerations should be kind of baked into these things now it could be should be second nature to to how a production is <coughs> brought to life um i do but i think it should be second nature to everything we do the way we live our lives you know so i think you know, we should think about that in our own personal life and our own personal consumption. So I think, you know, making it part of the process of production and work, as you said earlier, it shouldn't be the brunt of the work on production. It should be a shared responsibility mm -hmm. between us, the agency and the client. So, yeah. So, Anka, do, do, do you agree with what Anna said? Yeah, I do agree, uh, although I can only speak for the German market and I see that um, there's a certain need now and a certain demand from uh, um, agencies and production companies that really want to get advice from green consultants. And as uh, me being part of the association for, for uh, commercial producing, um, I see that they, they really want to have um, like consultancy and it's not only from the agencies and the production companies, uh, obviously, it's also from the brands, but uh, this is new. It's not something that you can already, uh, this just really, we are at the starting point since a couple of months now. I feel that the, the need is there, but we're still at the beginning. I think one of the things that we have to kind of be accountable for at this point is, as Anna pointed out earlier, this is not just like a, an optional situation at this point. There is now a moonshot period of time for us to shift all of industrial practices to something different. What and about the kind of governmental legislation around green producing, uh, especially in the e EU, there's been more of that introduced, but what happens when that legislation legislation doesn't exist? And might not exist for some time how are companies going to be held accountable so in the us there are city walls uh, a business practice across the board in los angeles but it's not really being enforced so corporations aren't yet making that general practice because there's no penalty if you don't do it so what we've been doing with green the bid is actually talking to the agencies particularly about how they should be explicit in their bid specs about what they want to see on set so we give them information about what a sustainable set should look like they put it in their bid specs we tell them the sort of the the checkpoints in the production process they should be looking out for. And then we support the production industry in either working with consultants like Anchor's co company or, or doing the process internally, which lots of the production companies are now getting more and more au fait with. And then the level of reporting that's expected on the back end of that, so that then you have these sort of bookends where there's the expect expectations laid out explicitly by agency and brand at one end and the reporting given back by production at the other end, and that can start the process of holding everything to account because really that's how production works anyway. It's not like there's external legislation that everyone's paying attention to all day, every day with production. There are just agreed practices and processes that the industry operates within that everyone has an expectation for and is kind of educated in, but we don't have it yet for this system. So it's kind of building those practices into the process as it currently exists. Yeah. I mean, in Europe, it's easier because we have the European Green Deal um, that uh, was, um, I think, installed in 2000. 
2019 until 2050, and already uh, by 2030, we need to reduce it by 55%, which is quite a lot. And in Germany, it's even more due to the Friday for Futures demonstrations. Um, we need to be uh, with 65% uh, reduction by 2045, which is quite a challenge. And I'm uh, uh, sorry, by 2030, which is quite a challenge. And I'm not sure in a climate law that really forces us to to um, yeah to follow the legislation and there are quite a few uh, instruments that already came into place especially for the film industry not for the commercial film industry but for the um, long feature film industry um, uh, in Germany at least I don't know how it is on a European level we have uh, the initiative called Green Motion uh, since March, and um, you have to follow a certain rules there, for example, reduce um, the uh, cars that, well, not reduce, but not use cars with fuel, um, or for example, use eco uh, currents, stuff like that. And um, we want to uh, take these rules that are already in place and also look into that for the commercial film industry and see if we can set up uh, some uh, well advice. You cannot say rules because it's it's not possible with brands and client uh, with brands and agencies, obviously. But um, yeah, we'll try to figure out something. And we also have this um, initiative or incentive uh, called the Giraffe that we uh, gave out this year for the first time, where we really gave uh, awarded a, a prize to a commercial film production that already. Um, used all these um, new possibilities that uh, are in place. Is that, I mean, is that an, another approach I think people have talked about in the past where um, commercials, there is essentially an award for the greenest commercial or, you know, sort of production in some way, shape or form that has been green and therefore gets awarded at whatever can or those things. Is that is that a step that people could take or is that, not the right way of approaching things do you think i think our industry loves an award so i think if there were, <laughs> award, if there were an award for the greenest production then i think um you know if anything to to help the agenda you think that could be award. a viable is that a viable thing that you think could happen well i think so because i actually think people want to feel like they're doing something to help so i think having you know like having a checklist having having a guideline having something to you know i think it's something to be proud of winning an award for the greenest commercial yeah i think yeah. i think um, i think the industry would would um embrace that i think actually having key performance indicators that are to do with actual action taken carbon saved you know all of those things um i think i think there's a really valid avenue to go down for advertising yeah sure okay definitely and uh, like over the course of the pandemic <clears throat> there was a lot of talk about uh obviously there was less travel uh for, for obvious reasons uh but there was a lot of talk about how that people and production companies and agencies and, and everyone involved in the business would continue that after the pandemic you know they, there was obviously a positive effect on the environment um and that's some one of the very few benefits of the pandemic and that that would be maintained after uh, the pandemic had finished do, do you think that will be the case are, are people going to be sort of mindful of how much travel they uh, make um, once they're allowed to do so again and now that we are allowed to do so most of us at least do you think that's something that will continue or will we just go back to the kind of the old days Cinder do you do you have a hmm. view on that yeah I mean my commercial career pretty much started around the time the pandemic started so it's been interesting because I don't have like a huge historic perspective on it but in a way one thing that I think is meaningful and should give us hope about ourselves is the way that during the pandemic, we were able to sort of culturally shift um, how we think about our collective ability to respond to a crisis and our ability to change the way we're working and living uh, to protect our health, you know, and sort of secure our uh, immediate future in the, in the case of the pandemic. But I think if anything that should show us that this is something we are capable of on a global scale and across industries, 
But on the other hand, you have a lot of us out in California or Pacific Northwest experiencing wildfires or even in Germany, you have your flooding. Um, and same in, you know, New York, intense storms. So I think for a lot of us, it is, it does feel quite on our doorstep and quite immediate. And um, we need to normalize creating that, that sort of culture shift. There's always been like an emphasis on the individual carbon footprint when it comes to climate change. But that, you know, that was a metric invented by British Petroleum to sort of deflect the systemic responsibility um, of reacting to climate change as an entire industry and pin it on the consumer. So I think we sort of have to, to lead the way of, you know, we're, one cool thing about film is we're always working in large groups. We're always working collectively as a system. It's not, you know, an individual driven art form. Um, so I think we should use that mentality to, to respond to climate change in the way we work. Peter, how about you? Do you think that um, travel is something that will be sort of given more consideration after post pandemic, uh, after all the discussion? I think, I absolutely think so, for sure. Um, I, I can't see us going back to what we used to be doing when it was all a bit of a jolly and everyone jumps on the plane and heads off and 15 clients come because they haven't been out of the office for a year and they all come for a jolly. I, I don't see that as coming back. I mean, it may come back in places, but I, I think we've learned a massive lesson coming out of the pandemic. Um, I did a job where I was directing from the office and I didn't travel to Vancouver, you know, and that was weird, but it worked. Um, and it was a nice spot. So, you know, these things are all possible. And I think we're only learning that they're possible because we've been forced into it by the pandemic to, for us to actually realize that, yeah, there are many ways of achieving things. Um, how do you think you strike the right balance then between having the right people on set and having too many people on set? I, I think it's another skill that we've all sharpened in the pandemic is thinking about how to boil down our processes to the most essential form. Um, and it's been really helpful in a way having, I think it just makes people really mindful. You know, if you're on a Zoom and you have a bunch of people contributing, they know they have to filter through one person who's physically on set. It just makes them really mindful about their contributions and um, making sure that they kind of come to a consensus before they're throwing the ideas out at the director or the people actually there in person. So I think that, um, I don't know, we should just lean into the fact that we developed that skill and see how we can apply it to kind of get to, to make our productions, um, you know, just to have not necessarily like the bare bones version of it, but just focus on who needs to absolutely essentially be there and not just have this, you know, bulked up set for no reason. Peter, is that the same for you? I mean, you were saying earlier that, um, you know, you, you shot from home and, and, and that was a sort of pretty good experience. I mean, do you think it's, you know, we don't need as many people on set as we used to have? Um, I wouldn't want to repeat that experience, frankly. I mean, it right. worked, but, you know, it's not something I'd be, you know, excited about repeating. Um, right. I suppose, I mean, just from my point of view, it seems that isn't there an, isn't it, isn't it a self controlling element as in we don't tend to have people we don't need really i mean because we have to pay for them to be there so isn't it a partly a financial balancing act that happens naturally um uh, obviously there's employment and th those issues of not employing people but i, I my gut feeling is uh, you know there's we have a certain amount of time to get through a certain amount of stuff. And we, you know, we, we have the people there to f facilitate that. And obviously if there's people who are unnecessary to that process, then we shouldn't have them there. But I don't tend to think, well, I might be being na naive. So pr production can tell me if I'm talking non nonsense here, but it would seem I'm that- I'm always happy to tell Peter when he's talking nonsense. I mean, yeah, uh, indeed. There's a, there's a, you know, that I think you're very much talking about it from your own perspective as a director and, and the crew that you have around you. Yeah. I think I think looking at the bigger picture of, of like the amount of agency and clients that go <clears throat> on set or even executives from a, oh, yeah. a production company, you know, I think, I think, we, we've all learned that actually what is the, you know, also the best use of our time? Is it really with traveling all the way there and being on set and being useful for, you know, a, a small portion of, of the work that's needed? 
or um, you know, now we have the ability to be able to view the shoot online, which means that we can be a lot more productive um, with our time, as well as having less of an impact on the environment. I do think it is crucial though, however, that you know, we do have representation from the agency on a production and creative level on set because the things that happen while you're shooting and the conversations you need to have, sometimes decisions need to be made in real time. And when you're trying to uh, relate that and communicate that to people on Zoom, it can be really difficult. And so some, it's really useful to have agency, you know, the essential agency in uh, creative or client people that can make those final decisions. Um, but I, I think, you know, there is, there is um, definitely a consideration for everyone to think about what is best for the production and what is the best use of everyone's time that will also have less of an impact on the environment. But the, often I've spoken to a few people over the last couple of years who sort of say that travel uh, is one of the perks of the job to a large degree, especially from an agency's perspective that, you know, being able to to kind of travel around, shoot abroad, you know, the kind of cliche of you know, the script opening, you know, we open on a beach in the Bahamas sort of thing, uh, you know, is that, and that their worry was that that perk will mean that there's less incentive for people to sort of, you know, good young creative people to come into advertising as a job. Is that, is that just, over, is that sort of not really something we should be considering that travel is something that kind of attracts talent to this industry? I mean, it seemed to me like the wrong reason to be attracted to the industry, just the wrong reason, isn't it? I mean, if I heard about someone, oh, there's this new, these new creatives that have come in because they love travel, I wouldn't be that impressed. So, you know, it didn't seem like a good reason, put it that way. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a really interesting question because I think um, there's there's a lot of jobs that people have, had in the last 20 years where those perks exist those kinds of perks and in the removing of those perks i don't think our industry is one of them actually i think if you remove the flying from our industry it's still full of massive incentives including actually being paid a living wage to do something creative which is i think a privilege for most people is to be paid a living wage to, to to do something creative and fun for a career but i do think we do need to in in order to adjust our behaviors in terms of what's required to be responsible for the climate crisis coming back to accountability in our industry we do need to contextualize what we're doing in the greater scheme of what's happening in the environment around us so yes if everything in the world worked perfectly and we were all happy and there was an egalitarian society globally where there was no one who was bearing the brunt of what's going on right now and what we've got baked into what's coming in the future then fine, everyone fly everywhere and it's fine. But that's not what we're looking at. That's really not the context we're operating in. I'd love Cindy to speak to this more because I feel like this is getting into the more of the creative side of the conversation. But the truth of the yeah. matter is that our behavior, our jollies, are the things that we see as perks, they are baking in really unacceptable outcomes for larger and larger percentages of the global population. And I don't think it's comfortable to look at yourself in that context. Cinder, do you want to hmm. do that? Yeah, I mean, I think that on a larger scale economically, from what I understand, um, is that part of the reason why, as we're phasing back into business as usual, um, after the first couple of years of pandemic, part of the reason why it's been hard to attract workers back into the office, um, or back into their conventional jobs is that people sort of had a taste of, of what it's like to orient their lives around other parts of their identity outside of work. And I think at least with my generation and younger um, creatives, we are really increasingly drawn to um, careers that are rooted in a sense of meaning and purpose and value outside of just, uh, it's just so much, I think for us, at least in my peer group, we're, we're really thinking about what projects we take on in terms of how they align with our values or if they yeah if they give us a sense of meaning and a lot less about just money and perks like traveling and things like that so i think even if travel is amazing and we're um you know phasing out the extent to which it's been 
done in advertising historically, I think we can really attract amazing talent by just giving them a really good balance of projects that um, that make them feel like they're doing something uh, with purpose and something helpful. So uh, I totally agree with <clears throat> Cynthia. I also think that young talent nowadays uh, would not fall for these kind of perks like traveling to the Bahamas is uh, a reason why I should get a job. I think they're so conscious and uh, more than we are actually. I mean, Friday for Future is coming out of uh, a young generation, all this, um, this frustration and this, this urge. Uh, and, and so I think that, um, as she said, um, I think it, it needs to be different reasons to go into this industry. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Okay. So, you know, look, if you take that travel is, you know, one of the, or the, the sort of uh, the, the less